Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. We've got a great show lined up, but first, let's take a look at our weather, see what's going on. I think we sort of might dodge a bullet this time, but that's good to see. But here locally, we're talking about a high of 83, a low of 74, and the water temperature, we're looking at 78. So it's been a steady 78 now for a couple of days. That's taken off the pier. They still had to fix that buoy. Okay, the river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. The Appalachian of Blunstown is reading a 8.7. It's got a slow, steady drop to it. It's going to be a good weekend to be on the river if that rain don't come in. And the Chocolate Hatchet at Caraville is at a 6.6. .6. And they are predicting us getting some rain scattered throughout the Panhandle. So be aware of that as you're making outdoor plans and, and be, be close to some shelter somewhere. But uh, we, we're going to, you know, usually October, I was talking to, I think, Scott the other day, and we are talking about usually October is usually the driest month of the year, and we are going to flat out have a pretty wet October. So it is what it is. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at good tides today. High is going to be 12.43 a.m., which we just had it this morning, uh, right after midnight. So it's, it's going out until right around noon, about 12.24. All morning long, got an outgoing tide, and then after lunch, you got about a 30, 45 minute lull right there, according to what the wind's doing. They're going to start coming in. So later on, three ish or four ish will be some really good fishing time with the incoming tide. So it uh, sounds good. Our uh, wind's going to be coming out of east, southeast. It looks like about seven, so it's not a really, really strong wind. We are going to get some wind uh, pretty quick, though, so be aware of that. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look and a reminder now, this Saturday up at Deer Point, uh, the High Point uh, Landing, the road up there, High Point Road that goes in there, that we talked about this the other day, Brandon Barber putting on this fundraiser, really, is a, it's a vast tournament. We're trying to raise funds for Michael Harris and family, all the expenses they face. They've had a challenge, and they don't ever say anything about it at all, but some people are just stepping up to help, and we appreciate Brandon doing that. So his phone number, let's see, is right up the top of the page, 890-9469. If you want to call, you might want to just make a donation to, to that, because uh, half the money is going to the Harris family, half of it is going to the fishermen and raffle tickets. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get up there. I always say that. But anyway, uh, all right, a couple of things. All right, we'll talk, let's talk about the, the, what I call the berry people, picking berries. And I've showed pictures, you know, a lot of y'all have sent throughout the panhandle and it's all scattered here all over the place. Well, you're not going to believe what happened the other morning. I'm driving driving home, I say the other morning. It's 10 or 11. I've been somewhere and had to come back. I was coming back to the house. The road going into my house and I, all of a sudden, to my right, this guy steps out of the woods. I mean, it's very unusual because nobody's ever there. And he had a bucket with him. It, it didn't take me long to figure out what's going on. So I pulled out my camera. I, I've gotten good to just start taking pictures. And I'm going to show you some pictures. Look. Okay, so he's walking down the road. And, and uh, this is the road going to my house now. Okay, well, there's a bucket right there in the middle of nowhere. Okay, stop, stop. look at this one right here. He is turned and looking away from me. Now, do you not read the body language that he knows that he's doing something illegal and not supposed to be seen? And he didn't expect anybody's going to be on the road about 9, 30, 10 o'clock that morning. He's facing all the way because there are no berries out there. It's a marsh area right there. He's not looking for berries. So I'm going to call the law. So we'll get on there. And then he goes down to the end of the road. That's his truck. He has a truck parked way down at the end of the road. That's not my house in the road. I'm right next door to that house to the left. So that's, that's and then right there to my left, that driveway, some, some of my very best good friends, uh, and, and she was out there by herself, and she didn't, uh, I, I pulled in her driveway and let her know. And uh, so here he is facing, coming toward me, and I took a picture of him going away from me. So anyway, I, I just, uh, want, I just wanted to mention that you know, we've got we've got to uh, 
put a stop to this. I know if they have permission and all, that's completely different. They're working hard to make some extra money. That is fine. But when they're trespassing on people's property, they're going to get by with doing that. So then they're going to get by. They're going to think they're going to be able to trespass on your property and think because nobody's stopping them on that time. That's just how the human nature, that's how the mind works. And it really, I brought up a lot on the show because it really bothers me that they're getting away with doing this illegally. So, uh, like I say, I, the law is aware of it, and, and of course they got to catch him in the act and all, but you could tell when he turns his body away like that, he knows he wasn't supposed to be there. I don't know the guy, so anyway. Anyway, let's move on. I got an email here, a good email from uh, J.B. Hillard up there at the Funex Springs, the Bent Rod Fishing Club. Just letting us know, and I'll talk about it more. Basically, the county is open the process. They're going to start working on Cal Ford Landing. Uh, well, that's on Highway 20 near e Ebro, and they're going to open up the bids on uh, November the 2nd. Now, it's like 21 pages, but basically they're going to redo the landing up at Cal Ford Landing, which is a good landing. It's just sort of a little, it's used a lot, but they're going to really fix it up. So good, good job over in Walton County. Thank you, J.B. Hillard, for letting us know that. They're going to do the drainage and all, and I always like to get, you know, good information on that. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, there are a couple of other things. I, okay, right here. This, uh, this is Florida Bass Nation. I'm not going to read the names and all that. We're talking about kids in, in middle school and high school fishing the bass tournaments throughout the state. They've really gotten organized here in Florida, uh, and I'm so tickled to see it. And I got a little message there. I'm, I'm just going to read the first place. This is fishing down in Oak Lock, New, uh, I mean, Oak Lock, Lake Okeechobee. Okay, this is a last weekend, Florida Bass Nation. There are over 100 boats on Lake Okeechobee. And look at the first place team right there with 20 pounds. Remington Potter and Zach Flanagan from Liberty County, right here in the Panhandle. And I got fascinated. I started reading all these different clubs. They're all over the state, that second line. And so, I, anyway, there, look, one page, two page, three page, four pages. There are over 100, okay, there are over 100 uh, boats that actually, uh, that actually fished that tournament. And I, I, I was just tickled. I was reading. Technically, they cannot be associated with the high school, and and it's a, a liability thing. I, I hope they can get that worked out. Because, but uh, the funding and all are done by by them, really. The parents and all doing it, and the donations and all. But they can say where they're from, like Liberty County. And I got tickled. I, I went through all hundred of them. We see, and a lot of a lot of teams from you know around the Okeechobee area and over the St. Johns River. And you just I can just reflect at, at where these fishing areas are. And I, I just get a kick out of it. And a lot of groups from up here. So I want you to encourage your your folks and all if they're not involved in some some other things and all. This is something really good to get into. The one I got tickled with though I was getting at uh, there was a team from Quincy High School. Well, there's not a Quincy High School left. This was back when I was at school in Quincy. It was Quincy High School. It's changed the name twice. It's gone from Shanks High School to, to East Gaston, and, and it's not a, but, but now they're in the community of Quincy, so it's Quincy High School, and I, so they're just being represented in the community. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I always appreciate the feedback that y'all give me. A lot of times it's a, it's a phone call, it's a text or email and or something. Uh, you send it to the Panhandle Outdoors website there and I get it. So this is a good one here. You know, I was talking about the snakes, the copperhead last week and also the cottonmouth. And I got a good email. I'm just going to briefly read it a little bit so you can see. This is from Lawrence LeClaire. Uh, enjoy your show. I've been interested in snakes for 60 years. So he ought to know a little bit about them. So the uh, what I wanted uh, in a big print there, cottonmouths are found throughout the state of Florida, but copperhead have a limited range. Copperheads are found in extreme, okay, northern Escambia, San Rose, and Okaloosa, and they're common along the Apalachico River in Jackson County, Calhoun, Gas, and Liberty. And then he sent a map, and, and this is interesting now, in the bottom, in the bottom left corner of that map there, that is that is the uh, actual copperhead range. But you can see where it reaches down into Florida. Okay, the top left hand corner. Those are the only counties that reaches down into them. Okay, it doesn't come into uh, Washington County, Bay County, but now along the Apalachicola River, you see where all the uh, copperheads can be. So 
Now, the cottonmouth word up there refers to another one. So, in fact, here's what he's talking about. This is this is a cottonmouth with a yellow, baby cottonmouth with a yellow tail. So that helps clarify what I, what we were saying the other day uh, between the, uh, those young ones like that. So that that's really good. Thank you for sending that to us. Okay, uh, let's on the lighter side. I found that this would apply to several of my students each year. I found a photo of me in high school, that empty desk. Okay, okay, some more email. Mark uh, Flick sent this. Hey, Winston, you've mentioned the water several times since Sally. I got back on the horse Sunday since he, remember he sank the John boat in East Bay a couple weeks ago, which is a couple days before Sally. Y'all remember that picture? So out in East Bay yesterday, the bay is often between 8,000 and 12,000 parts per million brackish where I go, sometimes upwards of 20,000 parts per million. But it was all, all nearly still fresh water after Sally at around 860 parts per million, so it had a lot of fresh water. Uh, and then he took some pictures at the landing where he goes. Uh, it's still, you, you can see right there at the landing. That's a beautiful place there. You can see the salt water. Uh, there's just not much salt water. It's all brackish and all fresh. So, so thank you, Mark, for sharing that with us. Okay, uh, jumping. I'm sort of jumping on a different. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me talk about this one right here. This is. Uh, I'm going to different, bouncing around different subjects, and uh, I do that sometimes, and uh, it keeps it interesting. But we you know with the hurricane coming up now, and then the morning we had Sally, and but we look back at Michael, and uh, and I want to give my my history of hurricanes. A lot of y'all the same way. If y'all remember, we used to get a little tracking map, a little, and they would give us the coordinates. I remember sitting at home and listening to the radio and get the coordinates of where, they, and then you mark it in, and you you have those little hurricane tracking maps. I would get a kick out of that, and I'd go to school and tell people about it. I'd say, "Are you crazy? Why are you doing that?" And I just loved tracking them, and uh, then trying to predict where they were going. I didn't we didn't know anything about, it. and the weather service uh, would be ahead of all of it. And so I've always been intrigued with the natural part of the hurricanes. And then, so I've always, and then when the Weather Channel came along, you know, you put all that to the side and just watch the Weather Channel. And the, and the National Weather Service and, and then the National Hurricane Center, they'd go to Miami and all and, and interview these people. And, and uh, it, was, it was always still good. But in my point getting, when I, I was so disappointed, or, or really it was sort of got off with me, that they, they just flat out, we talked about it, all my friends and all, every one of us in 100% agreement, they flat out missed the report. On, on how strong Michael was going to be, and they're they're fairly they were fairly accurate on the path of it, and they you know that changed. We all know how that's going to change with the pressure systems and all. But someone posted this, and I, what this is, I'm going to uh, uh, let's see that top. I'm going to put up a top line right here. The top line winds are cur okay. This went down. You see where it's at. Winds are currently forecasted to reach 70 miles per hour before landfall. Hello. Okay, this was two years ago, October 6, 2018. This was the National Hurricane Center, and they've said potential tropical cyclone. So in, anyway, so you see, and of course they got the uh, projection, of course it was pretty close and all, but they were predicting Michael, and it, what it did, it caught us all off guard. And, and we're, and you know, I've said this before, I've been here generation after generation, we never had anything like we did with Michael as far as getting a, getting just blindsided and I, I did some research on it and, and got some input on what was going on inside the, the brain the trust uh, brain, brain trust inside the room there and they were caught off guard the meteorologists were shocked at the intensity of how Michael formed and they were not expecting it either they didn't do anything intentional it just flat out caught them off guard and, I, and as we go back to it that will stand out in the history of uh, of actual projections, all how they flat out missed that the the intensity of it and how it stayed together, Category Five all the way into Georgia. So anyway, I just wanted to, with this stuff going on now, I wanted to want to share that with you. Okay, let's let's jump into something else. How about dove season? People want to know how long Phase One dove season. We're looking at it September. We're in it right now, but it's going to go out about two weeks. October 18th is over, and it's going to pick back up November the 14th and go to that first weekend of December and close for two weeks and then open back up and for the late season all the way all the way through January 31st so we we'll, we can have some dove shoes all along so just just let me know okay uh, I wanted to I, I didn't uh, 
Okay, let me show this. I, I didn't get to show this the other day. This is one I didn't show, and I just want to show this because I, the reason I want to show it, it is 100 years ago this week, okay, October, look on the left side there, October 1920. Now, this is one week's worth of catching fish, and this is what I said about the newspaper article. They would put it in the paper, so it listed everybody. It didn't matter if you were rich, poor, uh, no matter what color you were, it don't matter anything. If you brought in fish, by golly, they're going to give you money, and they're going to weigh them, and they're going to sell them. And, it was, and this gave you a great insight 100 years ago. But I, I've got this. I want to show this my, to uh, Larry Brown and to, okay, and to uh, Scott Lindsay. Top, right there at the top, H.C. Kane, he brought in 5,984 pounds of mackerel. Now, it's not a group of mackerel. So, and then everybody, Burt Ware, and over that right column, everybody brought in mackerel. Look at that guy, William, okay, top right-hand corner. They brought in 23,000 pounds of mackerel. <laughs> okay, what about, okay, top, top middle right here, uh, Captain Frank Grooney, Cooney, uh, he caught 3,000 pounds of snapper and 2,600 pounds of grouper. This is all in one week. Look at all these. You don't think there were a lot of fish out there? <laughs> it was, so uh, anyway, H.C. Kane was over there in Phillips Inlet. Uh, Larry Brown's family would come down there, and Scott Lindsay's family, and they, they, I've heard they both tell me stories and so much similarities, and I, I really didn't cover that in my book, and I, I feel bad about not covering that west end of the Phillips Inlet area. In fact, I thought about doing a little, a small book on just the history of, of the Phillips Inlet because there were a lot of things going on. They would put the net out there, and they would catch a lot of them in Phillips Inlet, and Scott told me this, they put a big old net out there, or maybe Larry, and it catch a bunch of them and sell them just like that, and then wait another week or two in the past, you know, that cut through would be open, so when the storm come in, all the fish would come back in there, and they'd catch them again. It's like, it's like they had a, a, a goldfish pond or something, they just put them in, but that, that was just, I just wanted to share that one page with you from, I didn't get to do it yesterday, so. All right, let's take a final break, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our Blue Water Outriggers fishing game times today. How about 421 this morning until 621 right now, and 447 this afternoon to 647. A couple of announcements now. The downtown marina, what we call the city ramp downtown, it is, they're working on it right now, uh, uh, today, and they're going to take about a week, probably a couple of weeks, two weeks, to get it uh, to get it fixed back and it'll be open back up. So we're all excited about that. And also, uh, one of the viewers sent a note in that the I mentioned about fishing off the uh, or throwing a net off the uh, pier at the state park. It's still closed, so you can't do anything like that. But it, and I don't know this timeline on that. But that's two important outdoor things right there. One is good, and one we just don't know. Uh, let's. We, I'm going to show, we talked about how well, here, here he is again. Remember I showed a video of him with the seagull? Okay, here's a turtle. Uh, the small green sea turtle was hooked on the neck and flipper by Wade Fisherman's lure. So what happened? Let's see, we got it right here. Let me see. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start back over. Let me, let me start back over, Jeff. I, I missed the first part where you could see. Let me see. Okay, here, here we go. All right, so what he's got, we got the lure on here. He got a little sea, green sea turtle, and he's unhooking it right here. That's some tough skin. It's amazing what our uh, officers get to do. Had a pelican two days in a row, and now it's helping this little turtle. You know that little turtle. <laughs> I get a kick out of these turtles. They just, okay, so now the line, the line gets wrapped around them, so fortunately, Hal was able to, uh, to get it situated Roll it back over, and you can look. I can figure out real quick. He's on, he's on the shoreline of St. Joe Bay, and there's a grassy area. And of course, there's always a little muddy right up in there on a on the tide, but it really clears up, and you can see it. And the video. I don't know who's videoing him, but they're doing a good job. I guess that's his partner. And look at his happy sea turtle swimming away and telling us fishermen, please don't throw another lure on me. And it could have, no telling how that could happen. It could have been a pure accident. It could, the guy could have thought, see that, see that wake right there? Could have thought it was a redfish or something. 
and or or anything. So I don't think anybody would intentionally any of our sportsmen. But you can see, let's go back to what it was. It was a red and white. There it is, right there. Have you fished with that one before? I, I believe I believe we all have. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, good job. Good job, Hal. Uh, a couple of other things. Uh, I've got a lot to go over. One of the things, uh, I, speaking of FWC, I, I apologize for our uh, lack of information I'm giving you now from the FWC. I'm having to go dig it up. It's not a, it's not a, a good situation with us having an outdoor TV show. I never hear anything from them anymore. I used to, you know, we used to have Ken Paramore and Stan Kirkland coming on, and they would just, you know, have full amount of information. And then uh, I would get, I would get text, I would get emails about what's going on. I don't get anything now from FWC, and I, I, I don't know if it's, a, I don't think it's a COVID. I just, I don't know. But I apologize for that. And when I do find something from FWC, like the, like the Dove uh, season and all that, I'm just going digging it up. And uh, I wish we had a better relationship now. And I wish I could give you more information along the, along those lines. And uh, but anyway, it is what it is, and we're just going to do the best we can to bring you the outdoor news of what's going on. Also, uh, uh, I have a couple of things. I'll pick them up tomorrow. And remember, tomorrow we're giving away our, our seafood and, and our $25 gift certificate to Los Anahitos. Also, keep in mind uh, the hummingbird. I want to touch on this tomorrow. I had a friend up in Nashville. Uh, not it was a friend, not not family on the northeast side of Nashville. He said that his hummingbirds are, are getting ready. They're leaving Nashville, headed this way. I texted him back. I said, "That's okay. We got a we got a hurricane coming up here where they're gonna blow them back to you." So, but the hummingbird migration is starting, and the, and if you look at that storm, it's over zeroing in on that Tennessee area. So I told him they're gonna blow the hummingbird back up that way. So, anyway, uh, let's we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you all always for watching. Send me the information, anything you want to know. We'll try to find out. I know sometimes I, 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 I haven't been able to get back with people. It, it don't hurt my feelings. Send it back to me. Okay? Thank you all for watching Panning Outdoors. Do something good today for your fellow man and enjoy our great outdoors. And God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.